Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is laparoscopy and we will talk about its indications, contraindications, procedure and post-operative care. How would you define laparoscopy? It is a procedure in which peritoneal cavity is visualized by a specific instrument called laparoscope. What are the indications of laparoscopy? It is used for diagnostic as well as therapeutic purposes in conditions like ectopic pregnancy, endometriosis, adnexal torsion, subfertility, acute and chronic pelvic pain, PID, unexplained pelvic pain, PCOD. If there is risk of umbilical adherence due to previous midline laparotomy, we go for hesentechny. Also, in cases when we have very slim or morbidly obese women, we go for hesentechny. Also, in cases of the failed saline test varus insertion or unsatisfactory closed varus insufflation, we go for the Hessen technique. What are the contraindications of laparoscopy? Those include generalized peritonitis, major intraperitoneal bleed, massive obesity, diaphragmatic hernia, irreducible external hernia, large abdominal mass, advanced pregnancy, severe cardiopulmonary disease. Now we will talk about RCG classification of laparoscopic procedure which include level 1 which is used for the diagnostic purposes and also in cases of the ovarian biopsy aspiration of ovarian cyst sterilization level 2 is used for ovarian cystectomy salpingectomy for infertility salpingoophorectomy for endometriosis myomectomy salpingectomy for ectopic pregnancy level 3 is used for the deviation of the thick adherence total laparoscopic hysterectomy myomectomy for intramural fibroid prolapse procedure and incontinence procedure the equipments required for the laparoscopy include first of all laparoscope Secondly, the various needle, which is pneumoperitoneum needle, 120 mm long, 2 mm short. Trucor and cannula of the sizes like 5 mm, 10 to 12 mm. It is used to puncture the abdominal wall. Next is that of the laparoscopic insufflator, suction and irrigation pump, laparoscopic grasper, diathermy and scissor. Now we will talk about the laparoscopic procedure. I will introduce myself to the patient and explain the whole procedure, its needs, its complication and take an informed consent. I will ask the anesthetist to give general anesthesia to the patient. Make position of the patient. Appropriate patient position is made to allow full uterine antiversion. After scrubbing, gowning, gloving, drape the patient and drain her bladder. Do by manual examination to assess position, size, mobility of the uterus. Retract the posterior vaginal wall with the same speculum. Hold the anterior lip of the cervix with wall cellum forcep. Assist the size of the uterus with uterine sound. Pass the various needle through inferior border of the umbilicus to create pneumoperitoneum with the carbon dioxide. Vertical midline incision from base of the umbilicus, not in the skin below the umbilicus, long enough to accommodate trochor and cannula is given. Direction of the various needle insertion should be like pencil grip, first vertical and then toward the hollow of the sacrum. During insertion of the various needle, lift and stabilize the anterior abdominal wall. The abdomen should be palpated to check for any masses before insertion of the various needle. Now, how to confirm the various needle is in correct position? First is that of the recovery test. Open the valve and observe for the flow of the blood from abdomen through the needle. No fluid is recovered in cases of the positive result and recovered in cases of the negative results. Aspiration test for the syringe in which we put 5 ml of the normal saline in the syringe and push it in the various needle and suck it back. Third is that of the hanging drop test also called the saline drop in which a drop is placed which should be sucking due to the negative pressure. Next is that of the injection test in which moderate resistance to the liquid injection is there in case of the positive result and there is increased resistance to liquid injection in case of the negative result. Other tests include lift the abdominal wall with a wall close and then heard for hissing sound and Two audible clicks are used as test which are usually heard as the layer of umbricus is penetrated. The needle is then connected to insufflation apparatus, a flow rate of about 12 per minute and intraperitoneal pressure of 20 to 25 mm is achieved by 3 to 4 liter of the gas. The most valuable test of correct placement of the various needle is to observe that initial insufflation pressure is relatively low of less than 8 mm mercury and is flowing freely. If the two failed attempts, then go for either open Hessen or Palmer point entry. Pass trocar and cannula through incision in the inferior border of umbilicus, then remove trocar and pass the camera. 
The distension pressure should be 12 to 15 mm of mercury once the insertion of the trocar is completed. Insert the lateral trocar under direct vision lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels and 2 cm from anterior superior iliac spine, 3 cm above the symphysis pubis and 8 cm lateral to the midline in order to avoid inferior epigastric vessel injury or avoid the bowel injury and to avoid the risk of the hernia. Inspect the abdomen and the pelvis. Next is that if the open laparoscopy or the Hassan technique which is most commonly used technique and infra umbilical insane is given. First, insert the central trocar and cannula, then create the nemoperitoneum to reduce the risk of the vascular injury. What is safe triangle? The boundaries of the safe triangle include umbilicus at its apex, pubic symphysis at the base, and umbilical ligament laterally. Inferior epigastric vessels run lateral to this triangle. Lateral port should be placed either inside the safe triangle or lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. What is palmar point? Upper 3 cm on the left side below the costal margin is preferred alternative for trocar insertion except in cases of the previous surgery in this area and that is called the palmar's point. Why infra-abdominal or infra umbilical entry. Infra umbilical area is preferred as an entry point due to fixed peritoneum, thin least vascular area, and also for cosmetic purposes. On removal of the laparoscope, check by direct visualization that there are not evidences of injury to the bowel adherent under the umbilicus. Wound closure. Proper closure of the fascia within the umbilical port side is done to prevent wound dehiscence or hernia. Close sheath if midline port is more than 7 mm and lateral port is more than 5 mm. What are the intraoperative complications of the laparoscopy? Those include the bowel injury, bladder injury, vessel injury, retroperitoneal hemorrhage, ureteric injury, injury to the overinflated stomach, surgical emphysema, and anesthesia complications. The post-operative complications of the laparoscopy include the venous thromboembolism, infarction, the port side hematoma. In the post-operative care, shift the patient to the recovery room, monitor vitals, monitor input and output record, watch for any bleeding and give follow-up plan to the patient. So thank you so much. That was all about the laparoscopy. Subscribe on Ops and Gynae. Allah Hafiz.